Women of Midnapur in Indian freedom struggle. The incitation, enthusiasm, self-sacrifice and the mental setup of the Indian women for acceptance of danger have a glorious chapter in the history of Indian freedom movement. The promptness with which the Indian women had stepped forward from the safe and secluded life behind the pada to the turmoil of the noisy world outside is a most remarkable phenomenon in India. The Indian women, who were well known for their inborn timidity and shyness, cast off their long-cherished conceptions and came forward at the call of the nation to embrace the hard and pitiless lives of prison. Even the Home Secretary of the British Government had to confess that nothing had disturbed him. More than the Great Awakening among the Indian women and the part played by them in Indian politics. The enthusiasm of the women made the British officials also afraid. And this is proved from the secret report of Mr. Clark, the Commissioner of Calcutta Police. A portion of the report is reproduced below. The lady volunteers used to set out in public road every day and they pick up male volunteers and other enthusiastic on the way. The procession as it moves slowly along, augments in size until about three or four hundred persons are moving in a body. Traffic being hindered and often entirely blocked. If no steps are taken now it is inevitable that the movement will be encouraged and grow and the inevitable will happen, that is there is bound, sooner or later to be a collision between these parties of feminine agitators and a subordinate police. In the circumstances the Chief Secretary to the Government of Bengay wrote a letter to the Commissioners of all divisions. A portion of the letter, one particular problem has arisen recently which is difficult of solution and about which government would desire to have the advice of commissioners, viz, and the problem of how to deal with women who are taking an increasing part in public demonstrations on behalf of civil disobedience, the problem is how to maintain law and order and freedom of movement in public places, it is obvious that government cannot allow government business to be brought to a standstill and courts and treasuries to be closed merely because the force used for obstruction consists of women. I shall be glad if you will consult Indian officers and non-officials and suggest any measures for general use in dealing with this problem. The Karachi Congress in March, 1931 specially congratulated the women of India that rose in their thousands and assisted the nation in the struggle for freedom. The consciousness of the women in the whole of India took a unique shape and the women of Midnapur did not lag behind. Rani Sia Romani, of Karnak of Midnapur police station area, had already earned the glory of being the first lady prisoner for leading the Chwa rebellion in 1794. Again in 1781 Rani Krishna Priya, of Tainuk had shown the courage to contest the English East India Company in order to protect her rights. So no wonder that women in general of Midnapur would come forward during the freedom movement, when their services were considered to be essential. Imperfectly educated women of Midnapur. Even women not related to letters plunged into the movement, and so, they became the source of unyielding power and constant source of energy and inspiration behind the resistance movement. Though engaged deeply in household works, the women of Midnapur furthered the great national work in various ways. They were the primary source of energy and they put manliness in the men and nerved them with strength and energy. Mothers and sisters encouraged their sons and brothers to serve the country. The wives, as the real partners of life, followed their husbands to the falls of prisons. In the battle for freedom,